Okay. I think it's two minutes after the hour, so let's go ahead and get going. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome again to another Cantaloupe webinar. I want to start off by thanking everyone that's taking the time to join us today. I know it's been a few months since we got a chance to host one of these webinars, so that I'm excited that we're uh, jumping back in and we've got more to present for you all. I'm Adrian Austin, Director of Product and Partner Marketing here at Cantaloupe Inc. And today we're going to be talking about touchscreen readers, but specifically why we're seeing these devices become more prevalent and how we think they're becoming an incredible tool to add to many operators' arsenal of tricks that they can have for their business. So before we get started, I want to quickly provide some basic guidance on the webinar tools that we're using today. We're using GoToWebinar. You'll notice on the right-hand side of your screen in the GoToWebinar pop-up, there's a few different drop-down menus. One of those menus is the questions box. So here you can ask any question that you have for our speakers as they're presenting today. And then at the end of the session, we'll take some time to answer as many of these questions for you as we can. Uh, we're gonna be collecting the questions throughout the whole presentation. So feel free to throw your questions in there at, at, at any time. Uh, but first I'd like to start off with a quick overview about uh, what's on the agenda today before I turn it over to our speakers. So first off, we're going to start with some introduction of our expert speaking uh, panel just after this. Uh, and then we'll really dive into the meat of the conversation about talking about touchscreens. And specifically looking back at what we've already seen in unattended retail so far when it comes to touchscreen readers with some particular learnings that we at Cantaloupe have taken from our own touchscreen de devices, both the good and the bad. Then we're going to start our discussion. Then we're going to be talking about more of the now. Uh, and really talking about why touchscreens are becoming more popular right now. You know, what are they, are these devices doing differently? What are the new technology advances and what can they potentially do for operators business that they might not have been able to do before in the past? Uh, so then we're gonna be looking at a special announcement and things that are available now, like some of the new technology that are gonna be available to you. And then also if you hang until the end, we've got a special announcement talking about our own touchscreen reader, you know, that might be able to save you guys some money. All right, kicking things off here, I'd like to introduce our first person on our expert panel, and that is Anant Agrawal. Uh, so Anant first joined the unattended retail space just out of college when he co-founded Cantaloupe Systems back in 2003. Uh, now at Cantaloupe Inc., Anant is the chief revenue officer and is in charge of all things related to building customer success and everything related to customers you know, having a better go at their business. Uh, Anant lives in Northern California in the Bay Area uh, with his wife, uh, two kids, and dog, and dog Xavier. Anant, thanks a lot for being here. Thanks, Adrian. All right. Next up is Bill Bartholik. So if you've been to one of our webinars before, pretty good chance you've heard Bill speak. Uh, Bill has built a 20-plus year career in the convenience services, working in and managing all aspects of the business. Uh, he started his career back in 93 while in high school working for small regional operators and then after graduating college he took on a full-time role and drove that company through some strategic acquisitions and technology advancements uh, so after a quick stint of working outside the industry bill came back and started working at uh, at cantaloupe and has been going through and working with companies throughout the country expanding their technology footprint through the use of cantaloupe's enterprise platform uh, today bill resides in woodstock connecticut with his wife michelle uh, and his son and daughter, and as well as his dogs, Curly and Maggie. Bill, thanks again for letting me convince you to host another one of these presentations. Adrian, anytime. Thanks for having me. Last up, but certainly not least, is our special guest today on our webinar, which is Ken Jenkins from our president, or as president of VenPro. So Ken founded VenPro back in 2004 and implemented the business into a full service vending operation in 2007. So with over 22 years in the vending business, Ken has been dedicated to providing the great personal customer service that VenPro is known for to all of his clients. Uh, Ken resides in Kemp, Texas with his wife, Mickey, and five dogs, Abby, Leo, Decker, Patsy, and Snickers, named after the candy bar. Ken, thanks again for being here today. I'm glad to be here, guys. All right, and with that, uh, that's enough for me. I'm gonna hand things over to Anant to kick off our presentation with a look back at touchscreens and unattended retail. Okay, great. Thanks, Adrian. So over the past year, the team at Canelo, we've really been asking ourselves, why haven't touchscreens become the standard for cashless devices in our industry? You'd think that having a more engaging screen than a standard card reader 
would be better for our customers and their customers. So why aren't they more popular? So to try to figure this out, we first spent some time evaluating competitive screen-based solutions that are on the market today. While this was helpful, it was clear that none of their solutions were really gaining traction or hitting the mark either. Luckily, we did have the benefit of experience to help answer this question. As you know, USAT had acquired Benscreen back in 2016 and introduced the ePort Interactive device in 2017, which was the most advanced screen-based cashless device on the market. While we had some success with this device though, it didn't gain in the popularity compared to our traditional bezel-based cashless devices, which is why we actually stopped selling them last year. So we decided to spend some time to learn from our customers who did adopt the interactive device at scale. They were insightful and brutally honest in helping us answer this question from their own real world experience. So as such, that's why we've asked Ken Jenkins from Venpro, who's one of those customers that deployed thousands of ePort interactive devices to help share with us today what he found to be the good and the bad of deploying screen-based cashless devices. His and others' input have helped us better understand and answer the question and how we can do better and possibly make screen-based devices the de facto. Ken, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate your time. You bet. Thanks for having me. Anna. So Ken, you made the decision to invest in the interactive device at your operation pretty early on. Can you share kind of the process and reasoning on how you came to decide? to go with screen-based devices or kind of the traditional card reader that everyone else is doing? In the Dallas-Fort Worth market, as an independent vendor trying to compete against many of the national players in this market that have big budgets, <clears throat> great marketing programs, and, and a lot more money to invest in those things, I always like to separate myself from those people. So I saw the the being able to offer the touch screens as a uh, as an innovative uh, way to actually one up the the national competition. Also, um, it, I have a lot of millennials that work for me and Gen Z, and I found uh, I jokingly say that millennials have to have a touch screen to flush a toilet. And it was interesting that one of my uh, millennial employees, one of my millennial employees, heard me say that and laughed. And he goes, "That would be cool, though." So, uh, so as touch screens become more um, uh, useful to people and and, and attractive to them, uh, we saw that as an opportunity for us. Also, we needed to go out and get price increases, and we saw this as a good way to walk in with a demo unit and be able to show the customer all the features and benefits of putting these, these screens on their machines and be able to get them off of, you know, let's be honest, guys, everybody's got the same bag of Fritos, the same Pepsi Cola, but if you can get them looking at something that would be a, of a benefit to their employees, they're less concerned about the 10 cents that you're wanting to raise their prices. Also, <clears throat> I noticed that vending has really, I guess to use a vending term, become a little bit stale. Um, it's just not sexy. So we wanted to add a little bit of sex appeal and something visual uh, as well as actually useful that that our decision makers could, uh, could uh, implement in their businesses. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of, of all the really good reasons uh, and it makes a lot of sense. You know, the uh, interesting point, especially with millennials and Gen Z, which actually make up a majority of the workforce today in the US, um, they're so used to doing everything on their phone, looking at a keypad on a vending machine actually is hard for them, but having a touch screen is actually much easier and more intuitive for them uh, for their shopping experience. So I think, I think you have pretty good insight into that, making that decision. Um, so, I I guess from there, you kind of deployed across all your machines, uh, went all in with it. Uh, I'd love to kind of dig into your experience. You know, now that you know, that was a decision making process, you deployed all these on your machines. What was it actually like and what the good stuff that came out of it from your experience was? So, Adrian, if you could advance the slide here. 
So let's let's start off with uh, kind of the four big points that we heard from you and other operators as well, uh, which was really you know the engagement and draw, which I think calls to your point, Ken, around just making it look more sexy. Um, this feature that we had released with the interactive around direct refunds, which turned out to be a pretty good feature, the opportunity for advertising and the nutritional information. So let's let's dig into the first one on engagement and draw. So I know you 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 had the thought that you wanted the machines to look a little bit sexier. Did that actually work? And and how how did your customers like the devices from a drawing and engagement perspective? Absolutely, it works. They love the devices. They love being able to get their nutritional information, which I know we're going to cover here a little bit later. Um, they love uh, just the the ability to interact. It, it makes them feel more a part of things other than just browsing the window um, and and seeing what they might want to eat. Yeah, it makes sense. Got it. And then, you know, going to the next one, one of the features that, you know, you have said that wasn't really initially contemplated to be a big, what I would call killer app, uh, uh, but for the interactive device, it was this concept of being able to do direct refunds. Can you kind of explain to the audience what that actually means and how that helped your business? Sure. As you know, most of the people on this webinar probably leave refund bags with somebody at a business uh, and have those little slips of paper and whatnot. And, and some employee at the location has to deal with the refund process. With the refund feature on, on the device, you can actually, the, the consumer themselves can go on the device either send us a text or call us, and then we can return them with a code that will give them a free item. So the things that does it, it then we have good data on, on how the refund system is working. The customer does not have to be bothered with weeding things out in this case. And we get the benefit of, as you know, a product doesn't cost us as much as cash. So it, it worked out really well. Just to, to speak on this a little bit, we, we had a large customer <clears throat> that wanted a solution to their refunds. They're, they're a college with 30,000 students and they didn't wanna be dealing with individual refunds. So we put this system in place for them. And uh, one of the things they, they noticed right away is instead of talking about the vending company at every meeting that they had, they never talk about the vending company anymore. So uh, it, ju it just took all of that off their plate. And they actually liked it so much that when they came out with their new RFP, they required the system to be on their machines. Very cool, yeah. Uh, and it's just instant gratification too, going back to the millennials and Gen Z piece. We don't like everybody waiting wants, for stuff. Everybody wants to be comforted in knowing that their problem is being dealt with. I mean, off topic a little bit, even when, when, when someone turns in a service call, they don't want an answer that, yeah, we'll be there. They want to know we'll be there today before noon. So at least this way, like you're saying, they already know they've got their refund. They know everything's squared away and they can be confident that when they use the machine, they're not going to get ripped off. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. So. Uh, going on to the next one. So this one, this one's a little out there, right? So the, the killer app, app that everyone talked about for years, at least in my experience, was you know if you have a screen on the machine, uh, you could do advertising, and particularly you can get company like CPG companies or maybe local businesses to advertise to actually generate an additional revenue stream for the business. So um, talk to me about uh, your ex your good experiences with that, where that actually worked for you. Um, where it really has worked for us is with, A, some local businesses, for example, <clears throat> someone that offered uh, COVID vaccines and, and COVID testing uh, actually paid us uh, to, to put a, uh, an ad about their clinic up, but also different manufacturers that want to get slots in our machines, we would require them to uh, pay us for an ad. And usually we like the ads to be some sort of an offer. But I'll just give you one quick example. 
one of our uh, suppliers has always had a slot in our machine because their item is a very popular item. <clears throat> and they came out with a, a second item that's similar to the one we use all the time. And it's obvious that nobody was gonna buy it. I'm gonna guess that the average vendor bought three or four cases and a quarter when that item came out. We went ahead and put that wow. item in every machine and we put an ad up when we did and we were selling on item A, the staple item, we were selling 17,000 units a quarter. When we added uh, the, the B item in the machine, it also, with the ad, it also did 17,000 items per quarter. It only cannibalized the original item 10%. And by the way, that was about three years ago. And that new item that was introduced back then, we still have it in our machines now because once people started buying it and liking it, they continued to use it. So it's still one of our top sellers today. So the manufacturer only paid us for three months and they're still getting benefit from that ad today. Wow, that's that's a that's a huge story. And the capitalization of only 10%. So net, I mean, you were selling a lot more product from this manufacturer um, and it's definitely a big win for them. Yeah, and they continue to to purchase ads from us for other products that we'll run from time to time with them because of the success they had with that one. Right, and we have many other examples of that, but for time's sake, that's that's one good one. Obviously, they also like the throughput okay. data and and all the results that they get from that that we can give them from our seed reports. Got it. Great. And then lastly, uh, is nutritional information, right? So. Um, and some history here, you know, six, seven years ago, there was this notion that um, the, there would be a law that's passed by the federal government that would require that consumers had visibility into the nutritional information for the products they buy at convenience stores or fast food chains, and, and it applied to vending as well. And it was actually one of the big reasons why uh, VendScreen had started is to, to take advantage of that. Um, the, the product manufacturers did a good job on putting a lot of that nutritional information right on the product itself. And so the question really was how valuable was the ability to provide the nutritional information on the screen uh, once that happened? And so I'd love to get your insights on how it still benefited you to have it on the screen, even if it was on the product itself. Well, they can touch on the screen and see the nutritional information off the back of the product rather than trying to stick their nose up against a window and peek in and see right, what it is. Right. <laughs> so and it's just uh, yeah. like you spoke earlier on uh, people are comfortable using touch screens uh, when they get when they get up on top of the, the machine they just don't feel comfortable they're getting the information they want um you all the vending professionals on this call know that somebody that buys a snickers bar knows what they're getting they bought them before but the boss in the company see things a little bit differently and they want this information available to their people so they can make an informed buying decision prior to sale so much of the things that the the touch screen on the machine does is appeal to that decision maker whether or not it really is important to the purchaser in a lot of cases it is not all the time but either way when you're trying to get a yes out of somebody, anything that 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 works is is what we're going to use. That makes a lot of sense. Well, good. Well, now that we've kind of covered all the, the good stuff and the experiences that you've had, which is much easier to hear from my perspective as a supplier of the interactive device, let's get into the the negatives that you experience. Um, and I and I'll I'll try to be gentle here. Ken, you ready? I'm ready. I will be gentle. Uh, <laughs> so, so first, first let's you talk said about at the beginning of the call. You wanted me on here because I'd be brutally honest. So here we go. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so first, let's talk about the advertising revenue. You know, you gave us a good example of how it helped. Uh, it helped the manufacturer, particularly that actually was involved in that. Um, but uh, the promise from us and others is that you know it would be consistent and always there. I mean, that didn't really happen, did it? No, it didn't. I really think that on a national level, we're probably 
gaining the ear of the wrong group of people. Um, one thing I like about ads or offers on our screens is the CPG actually benefits in more than one channel. Plus, with it being interactive, it has the consumer's attention. I mean, they could even put up an ad for pizza or something, you know, that, that would, would encourage somebody to purchase something away from our machines. But right. um, we just, I think that that all is done through a marketing budget from a advertising agency. Uh, and um, I think we're far, far more effective and cheaper than billboards are. I mean, when, when somebody sees a billboard, they're not going to make a decision to make a purchase right then. They're just going to see that thing. And after two days, they're going to ignore it. Every time they come to our machine, they notice our ad. And you and I actually had some debate about this some years ago. I think the, the, the screen doesn't have to be large if it has your attention. So mm -hmm. I see a lot of value in these ads, but our CPGs on a national level have not seen that. We have a lot of success getting local ads uh, from time to time, but it never got the traction that I had hoped it would. Yeah, that, that, makes, that makes sense, got it. So, you know, the other kind of point that you and others have expressed is just the general robustness or maintenance of the screens compared to your kind of more hardened traditional card reader. What was your experience on maintaining these devices compared to other card readers? Well, certainly the screens could have been more more robust. Um, they can scratch things into them or whatever. Um, it, it leaves uh, open uh, the potential for a little bit of fraud. I would like to have seen more controls. On the on the software where we have flexibility by customer to control the uh, the refund situation, um, and then getting the devices repaired when we send them back in was really really not not effective at all. So um, yeah, a, a little more robust and figuring out that that vending everything for vending is built around being bulletproof. We don't want you to be able to shake the machine. We don't want you to be able to put salt water in the machine. We we even build the machines where mice can't possibly get in them. So uh, <laughs> while, while everything is bulletproof, there's some things that the device kind of weakens on, on the strength of vending. Yeah, and I can imagine, you know, everyone's kind of touching and swiping and but if you're out like in schools or in public areas, uh, scratching, vandalism, it, it's a screen, right? It's a screen that's meant to interact, so you're just going to have more interaction. So you probably saw more damage on screens, which, you know, it's it's not just the replacing of the device, is it, right? You're, you're also possibly losing sales then because the device is broken more often. Right. The repair, like you say, is pretty much replacing the entire device instead of yeah. going in there and fixing a little something. And so while it's down, you're losing sales. Thank goodness for Seed that it'll report these things for us. But um, <clears throat> yeah, that was definitely uh, a, a little, I wouldn't call it just a major problem, but it's certainly not as robust as uh, what we're used to. Yep, it's definitely in the area for improvement. And then the the last piece was the actual management of the screen images for things like ads and what you want to promote. Uh, we heard from you and others um, that it required actually calling USAT, working with our team to actually update those images and that they would have preferred a, a more self-service management system. Can you kind of walk us through why that's important? Well, you don't want to be dependent on when somebody wants you to put something up on a certain day and take it, then you might want to take it down on a certain day. You want to be able to honor that commitment. Uh, you want to be able to schedule product in in advance. You've got somebody merchandising that product in and you want you want the the person that's investing to get a good bang for their buck. You don't want to have to come to them and say, well, we weren't able to get started for two weeks. 
because we couldn't get our ad up or whatever. So, so being able to do that yourself, you can, you can be in control and be confident that it's accomplished. You've been speaking about uh, the back end service of uh, Cantaloupe Inc. recently, so I'll let you uh, I'll let you share about that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think you know what what we saw is that uh, you know the more proactive and real time you can manage those screens and the images you see, the more actually opportunities that would open up um, to be able to do some interesting things with consumers. So. so. Great, um, Ken, thank you so much for sharing kind of all the good stuff that you saw, which is a lot of great stuff. It makes sense to put the screens out. Some of the bad things as well um, that, you know, probably reason why a lot of other operators just weren't willing to, to jump in like you were. So we really appreciate your partnership, Candor. We've taken a lot of your insights and other customers' insights and taken that to heart into how we're gonna improve this experience on our next generation device. So really appreciate your partnership there, Ken. Anything anything you want to share with us before we move on? Um, I think we covered it very, very well. I'm excited to see the new device. I'm expecting it to be more uh, up to date as as the as you know, technology is always uh, regenerating uh, itself and improving over and over again. So uh, I can't wait to see uh, what you come out with. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. Awesome. Thanks, Ken. So. You know, folks with, with feedback from experienced or operators like Ken, Ken's been working really hard to Ken's point this past year, how we could do better. So we're really excited that the fruits of that effort are now really coming to market with our new customer engagement and touchless cashless device to market here very soon. And so with that, Bill, uh, I'd love to pick your brain here on, on what that looks like and give details on our new device. Thanks, Anant. Uh, thank you, Ken. Uh, really interesting and insightful conversation. Uh, you know, it's funny. <laughs> I've been in this industry since I was 15, and I've always thought it should be sexier. So I, I think that's the uh, the most times I've heard sexy with vending in a webinar so far in my life. So I thought that was really cool. So when you think of the markets, you know, that we touch, it only makes sense that this is the time for the touchscreen device to really take off. You know, nearly everyone now has a phone with a touch screen. Uh, my mother is 78 and she's on her phone all day. Uh, it fits perfectly with the way consumers now buy. You know, I'm buried in my phone most of the day and I'm so used to typing the touch screen, uh, to swiping the touch screen that it's a perfect fit for someone like me. And no, I mean, sadly, I'm not a millennial, right? So today the touch screen is definitely for everyone. Okay, so let's, let's look at what the touch screen solves. Adrian, I'll flow to the next one. Yeah, so we really want to stand out to the consumer and stand out to the clients, okay? When you differentiate from other operators and you can stay away from the race to the bottom using only pricing as your crutch, you have a great chance of winning. You know, Ken spoke, Ken spoke about this earlier when he was visiting clients and how he, uh, you know, how he really used the, the interactive device to, to, to upsell, right? So when you go to win a new client or to keep your existing one, you know, you want all the tools in your tool belt. I always love to go see clients when I had something new to offer. And the great part, you know, per Ken's wisdom earlier, is the new cool technology helps you maintain or even increase your selling price and margins, which is the most important thing, you know, as we all know in this industry. Okay, you also need to stay current, you know, with existing technology that consumers are used to from payments to the actual buying experience. You know, you only have one shot to make a first impression. The cleaner and more usable your unattended retail area is, the more comfortable people will be to buy from you. You 100% need to accept all forms of payments. Our current de devices enable that process, but now with touchscreen touch screen technology, the consumer can transition seamlessly from the touchscreen device in their pocket, you know, that we all use, to the touchscreen device on their favorite vending machine that allows them to buy whatever their heart desires. Okay, very important. And also we got to have a direct channel with the consumer, right? So you're out there, you're running this organization, unattended retail, vending, micro markets, amusements, whatever it is, but it's nice to have that direct channel with the consumer. You need to a way to communicate to the unattended customer or consumer. 
without, you know, you don't want more stickers or sticky notes on machines telling them what's going on. It's just not clean, right? So you get to stand out to clients and consumers. You give them technology that they're used to and then give them a direct line of communication to understand who they're buying from, right? Direct refunds, as I spoke about earlier. You can add in promos at the point of sale. Show other pieces of your business that could be offered to the clientele, you know, buying at your machines markets. That was always one of the struggles I had when I was uh, running a vending company is I had all these other things to sell and maybe my clients didn't even know it, right? If you can show that on the screen, it makes life so much easier. And then loyalty programs for your consumers. You know, it's a scalable piece of technology that will glow, grow with your customers and clients as they involve. Okay, very important. Okay, so here's the best part, right? We're talking about technology. We're talking about the touchscreen. Ooh, I see it here, attractive price, right? You know, the interactive device, like they said, came out in, um, you know, some years ago. And one of the pieces of it was a higher priced item, right? Because it was premium, okay? But with the technology improving, we can now offer more premium features without the premium price tag. One of the big wins here is that the price is such now that you can get all these benefits at similar costs to a traditional cashless device. You know, this is well without depending on the bet of the CPG companies providing any consistent advertising money. You know, you heard earlier between Ken and Anant that, you know, Ken does, uh, you know, some localized ads and he works with his own CPG, but on a national scale, it really hasn't gotten there. You know, is it still coming? Yeah, that's very possible. But the substantial decrease in cost for the new touchscreen devices really mitigate you know, most of that risk right out of the box. So that's a great, great, great thing. So the perfect way to show this is to take a look at our newest touchscreen reader, the ePort Engage. So this is the fuzziness of it all, right? It's coming, right? It's here. And if Adrian clicks to the next one, it's gonna see what it actually really looks like, right? So if the interactive led the way in touchscreens, the Engage is the next generation of this device. It takes all the good things from the interactive and it fixes where we may have been deficient, okay? So as you can see here, it's, it's, it's a beautiful device. So let's look at some of the features that make this device stand out. You know, it's got the three and a half inch vibrant color touchscreen. You know, I have actually one plugged in here in my desk at home and it's a really impressive to, to look at. It has a nice, sharp look to it. When your consumers are at the machine, they're gonna notice it and they're gonna buy from it, okay? The other piece is the edge-to-edge -edge touch responsiveness. That's unlike many other touchscreen readers on the market today. Consumers demand this functionality. Again, I go back to something I said earlier. We want to make the consumer experience seamless with how they currently go about their day. They aren't tapping areas of their iPhone that don't respond. So we wanted to make sure that didn't ha happen with our devices either. You tap it, it responds, very important. And of course, the impact resistant screen. You know, hey, we were the first to market with the interactive and you know what, we've learned. This device can take a licking and it'll still hold up. Now let's look at how we accept payments and the security features on this device. So it accepts nearly all payment types including chip and tap EMV cards. You can swipe, you can tap, you can dip, you can use your mobile wallet. And I assure you, uh, being the leader in this industry, we are going to make sure that if payments are accepted, they'll be accepted here as we move forward. Um, you know, the robust security as well. You know, again, this is probably above my pay grade, but full PTS, PCI certification with enhanced anti-tamper and fraud prevention. You know, what's that mean? Anti-tamper security. That'll automatically block attempts to alter your device. Extremely important in the unattended world that we don't let people do things like that. PCI, you know, PTS, 5X compliant device for promising, I'm sorry, for processing payments and data at the highest level of security. Okay, and then of course my favorite, uh, you know, I do lead the enterprise team, so I love to talk to about, about our seed suite of services. Okay, so this seamlessly integrates with the seed suite of services from Cashless Plus in the SMB space to Seed Pro and Office for our enterprise customers. How great would it be to have all devices managed under one portfolio where you can also manage your routing, your pre-kitting, your merchandising, your finance piece, your, your everything you have along with markets and OCS business 
the true one stop shop. Okay, so this is being released, um, you know, for pre order now, but also it's going to be released in October for sale. But there's more on the way once this comes out. Okay, we have the roadmap features that are coming. First off, nutritional information and in, information that's pretty much going to come right at the uh, the outset of this device, late Q4, early Q1. Display nutritional information for each coil directly on the screen. Instant refunds, which Ken talked about and not how great that is for the consumer. Uh, quarter one, 2022. So very soon after uh, deployment or, or, or when we release it. Interact compatible for our friends in Canada. That's going to be early Q1 as well. Um, you know, January, February of 22. Service, self-service image management. So with the interactive device, as they spoke about, um, you have to, you know, reach out to, you know, our, our technical service team. They put the devices on there for, I mean, the images on there for you. Now we're going to allow the, uh, the operator to do it themselves. And then, you know, one of our newest features is remote price change. Super excited about that. And this will be uh, part of this device very early on in quarter, uh, in 2022 as well. So real exciting stuff. It's just going to continue to, to evolve and continue to get better. So you're all on this call, right? I guess the question is, what's this thing cost? So here's the exciting news. This device at retail will be $299. Okay. Today, of course, because you're on this special uh, um, uh, webinar, you'll get the $20 discount for $279 with a minimum order of five. Okay, and of course, volume discounts are available off of this price as well. So we're gonna have this um, going here for the next few weeks, but we're really, really excited to uh, get this device into the market and to really get them on, you know, as many machines in, uh, in this, uh, this world as we can. We're really super excited, okay? So again, thanks so much for your time today. Uh, it was a pleasure to present to everyone. And I'm going to give it to, uh, to Adrian to take it away. Thanks, Adrian. Great. Thanks so much, Bill. And thanks, everyone. Another special thanks to our presenters, Anat, uh, Ken, and Bill, for, for presenting some really great information. Uh, I thought you guys really knocked out of the park. Even I, park, even I was learning something uh, from listening to a few new things that you guys were talking through. So following up on what Bill was saying about our special announcement, so pre-order pr pricing uh, for registering with the event, Keep an eye on your email. We're going to be sending you a follow-up email for information on how to order. Uh, or also feel free to get in touch with your sales uh, representative if you have one, and they'll be able to help you out with uh, you know, talking through that as well. But next up is, some people would say their favorite section, is our question and answer. So if you've had any questions for our presenters throughout the presentation but haven't put anything in there yet, now is the time. Again, on the right-hand side of our GoToWebinar control panel, you'll see that questions drop down. Uh, so feel free to click that open. If there's anything else you want to ask our presenters, uh, what then you can go ahead and, and ask that now. Uh, so the first question here uh, is from Frank, and I think this could probably be either for you and not or for Bill. And it's most EMV chip cards are now NFC EMV compatible. If is, is NFC EMV as secure as EMV DIP? And if yes, why are we offering the EMV DIP as well? Uh, sure, this is not, I could, I could take that. So from a security perspective, NFC or DIP uh, in the EMV world are equally safe. Um, the reason why we're offering both is that while most cards do have them, where it's uh, both NFC and contact for EMV with the little chip thing that you see in the card. There's actually quite a few cards out there that are still not. And we uh, I think Bill mentioned this, uh, as the leader in the space, we want to make sure we can accept anything and everything, even into the future. So even for myself, I have a Visa card today that's not NFC, but it's EMV chip. So that was the primary reason we wanted to make sure we included both. Great, thanks Anand. All right, next question. And I'm gonna paraphrase a little bit um, just for clarity. So, you know, with the release of, uh, of a screen reader, how do the screen list readers like the G10 still fit into the arsenal of what operators can use for cashless payments? So, I mean, I could take this if you want or not, it's up to you. 
Yeah, sure. Go for it, Bill. Yeah, so I, I think there's a place for both, right? So while this is definitely going to be a well-priced device, it's still a little bit of a premium cost above the uh, the G10 e-port that we have today. So, I mean, there probably is spots for both of those in your, your organization. You know, we love this screen device. We think it fits almost everywhere. But um, the G10 has been our flagship device since I think mid 2017, and uh, it's 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 worked really really well for people out in the field, and it'll continue to work well. And as we update that, um, that's a great device to have as well. I don't know if uh, Anand has any other insight into that, but I think there's spots for both of them. Yeah, no, I think look ultimately we want to make sure that our customers have options, and so this allows them to have all options. And, you know, in terms of where and, and which device makes sense per location, I think it will really depend on your personal choices. Um, I would say, you know, really high public areas where vandalism might be an issue, like hotels and things, maybe doesn't make sense still, even though the screen is a lot more uh, bulletproof than the previous interactive device, and it is the strongest screen on the market, you could still take uh, a screwdriver to it, right? There's, there's no way to make it perfectly um, bulletproof. So, um, I would say that would be one decision matrix. Um, if you locations just may not want the uh, screen uh, for any kind of camera security kind of issues. So you may want to look at it that way as well. And, and like Bill said, there is an incremental cost. It's not the $200 premium like the old devices were. Um, it's much smaller, but it still is premium. So uh, we just want to make sure you have the choice to, to make. Great, awesome. And I'm gonna to bundle together two of these next questions because I think they're along the similar vein. And the first one is, do these new readers work with all types of vending machines? And second, is the seed fee, or the I guess maybe this means to be the uh, connection fee, the same on this device as it is with other online devices? I'm sorry, Adrian, what was the first part of the question again? The first one was, do these devices work with all types of vending machines? Or I guess maybe this is a question on whether it requires MBB or DEX or whether there's some compatibility uh, issues or any questions. Yep. So maybe we talk about them first. Yeah, so from a compatibility perspective, it's the same as all our current devices like the G10. So as long as it's MDB um, and DEX, if you're using Seed, um, you won't have any problems from a machine compatibility perspective. And then, um, in terms of the monthly service fees, it's the same. There's no more incremental or additional fees on top of what you're currently paying for, let's say, a G10 device. All right, great. Uh, next question, again, going back to hardware, is the new screen device a one-piece construction like the interactive readers, and do we have a dual antenna like the G10? Yes, it is a one piece um, device, just like the interactive, the telemetry is in, in the unit itself. Um, for the antenna question, I'm not sure I have the answer for that one. Yeah, we'll have to come I'm back sure to I you on that, to but I actually, I, yeah. I believe it's a single antenna, not dual like the old one was. We'll try to follow up on email, but we'll try to get you some answers on that. All right. Last call for any final questions. I think we're coming right up to the end of the 45 minutes. I think that is it. All right, well, another big thank you to our presenters and also you know, a big thank you to the audience. Again, I know your time is, is valuable, so I appreciate you spending it here with us. Uh, if, you have, if you'd like to watch this again or you'd like to share this with somebody else, we're going to be sending out the recording uh, later today or tomorrow, so you'll get a link to that. Uh, and again, uh, appreciate you all being here and uh, look forward with having you guys again on another presentation soon and have a great rest of your week. Thanks, everyone.